Hi, I'm Betty Mitchell, and the people on the Nurture Commission asked me to do a demo on how to build a wreath, since we won't be in church, to do them together. So, if you order a kit, this is what you will get. You'll get a form with the candle holders, you'll get pins, and you get four candles. You have to have your own greens. And we have a large variety that we're going to go through while I'm, we're here today, so you can see that it, they don't have to be the same. There's a lot of different options. Okay, this is how I start. You may do choose your own, but what I find is if I go around the bottom first, push the pin in. It doesn't matter right now if this is hanging out. And then the next one comes to cover that pin. And then I keep going all the way around the bottom until it's all filled in. And if some of them are bigger, let's see if I can find a fat one here. Here's one that's kind of, you can put this so it drapes up over the top to start filling in the top. And these can be pinned later. They can be hooked in. They don't hang out like that. Jim and Emery happened to bring me some really long pieces of greens, but you can use smaller ones or... Do I have a short one here? Shorter ones. It's really whatever you happen to have. So I have one finished around the bottom. So we're going to stop now and pull that one up so you can see what that looks like. I'm back and you can see that I finished going around the outside. This is actually the lower part, but I've let some of this drape over on the top. The biggest thing that I like to make sure I do is really cover the base of the wreath. So I'm starting to lay some stuff on top. And for an interest, I'm going in the same direction, but you can turn yours around and go the other way if you want when you're putting that second layer on. It's all of it, it's an individual thing. And the reason I'm going in the same direction is because that's the way I started this time, not because it was intentional. And we're just filling in to cover the top of the base. And because of what's on the bottom, you can see that this is actually not taking as long and it's filling in a whole lot faster. I don't have to put as much as many pieces here. one should do it. Okay, so I basically have this whole thing covered. I like to add some different things to the top to decorate it. Other people will be finished at this point. It basically is how much stuff do you put, want to put on top of this thing. <laughs> so we have some different kind of greens here. And this is a little too long. But this will kind of spruce up the top a little. and just put a little different kind of interest on it. Okay, and then I could go around and put some more of that on here before I did candles and ribbons. But I wanna show you a couple different options for different things you can use. So we're gonna stop now. I'm gonna take these last two pieces out and we're gonna put some different things on. 
Hi, so this, these are some of the things you can look for um, to add interest. I have some holly here. Usually my holly has berries on it at this time of year. For whatever reason, it doesn't. I told them I think it's a COVID thing. I have some pine cones. This is from a, a tree in the garden at church and it has some red berries on it. Now this would probably not last from the beginning of Advent through Christmas in terms of keeping the leaves on and everything, but it is something that you could try to get some color in with this. You can see what adding some red in there does um, to bring some interest to the outside. I've also got some magnolia leaves either on the stem or separate. I would, for me, I would tuck some of these in here like this and then maybe go around in the other direction too, just to give some interest and it gives some shine. These are the magnolia pods. I noticed when I cut these off of my son's tree yesterday, some of these pods actually had red berries or whatever, are those, um, I don't know what they are, but red on them. I just didn't, thought he might be mad if I cut those off his tree, so I took the ones that dropped on the ground. Um, but something like this could also, instead of putting these individual ones in here, you could lay um, bigger stems in and then just hook those down. So, I'm going to, we're going to break for a minute. I'm going to finish the top of this with the holly and some of these red berries and a few things. And then we'll talk about um, candles and ribbons. So I've just added some of these berries. As you can see, this particular thing, I don't know if it fell in there. They're, they're not going to last, be, but they're to replicate the holly berries that should be there because I put holly all around here. Um, and then we'll put the candles in. The biggest thing that I notice is that we forget to fill in enough. This is one of those things where more is better. Um, Okay, so I have the candles on, and now you get a piece of ribbon. And your choice for the ribbon, you can cut this. Into four sections. And use one to tie a bow or just a knot of ribbon around each candle. But there are other options. You can take the ribbon and use that as another part of the decoration and just kind of wind it in and out. You can go down and under. You can, it's whatever you know you like to do. You can bring it around each candle and then take it over to the next one. And then use the rest of the ribbon to make one bow at the end that would um, decorate the whole thing. So then this would just slide down there. And then somewhere you can get have some more ribbon and make a bow or something like that. So. In terms of making a bow, let's do that. Bows have knots in the, like the little bubble in the middle of them. So if you take, you might want a close up on this. I'm going to move this out of the way. If you hold your finger like this, you make a loop. And you make a loop. And now when you go in a different direction, you have to twist the ribbon to get the next loop. 
and then you can twist and you're piling all this up underneath your um, thumb and your fingers on the back. And then you need a piece of wire. You can even use, if you have a, one of those twist ties from a bread bag or something, and you go in there and you twist all this together, then it's held and you can go back and fluff up your bow when you're finished. But I, can't, I don't have the wire here, so let's just, and if I, this is the, the tail of the ribbon I want to leave when I started. Let me do this one more time. You need to leave a tail when you start. So you make your, your loop. And do the middle. So you have a tail when you start, and then you leave a tail at the end. So that you, I haven't made one of these in years. So, so that you um, have a bow with some tails on it. I'm going to see if this is the ribbon that we use. Yes. You run your thumbnail. If you've ever done this with curly ribbon, you run your thumbnail on the inside of this. You can make this ribbon curl more, just like that other kind of party ribbon or whatever you call that stuff you do for packages. But you can make it curl more. You can also straighten out all the mess you've made by where I twisted that ribbon. If I didn't like what I did, I can use that to straighten it out and start over again. So I hope you've gotten some ideas, some different ideas of things you can use. Um, I forgot to use, these are the, the magnolia pods, but I also have some pine cones here. I picked these up yesterday. They fell off of one of my son's trees. Somewhere I have some decoration, not decoration, some definition of how to make something fancier with this, and it has something to do with putting them in bleach and turning them white. And I'm going to try that since I've got some of these, um, because white pine cones on here would also be uh, an interesting thing to add some more color. So have fun, enjoy your wreath making, and remember... A variety of greens and the more you fill it in the better it looks okay so Advent's over and it's really better for the environment and also just for the expense of the church if we recycle our wreath so this is what I do I don't know if you can see all these little holes I think I've used this for two or three years so I take all the pins out and put them in a baggie Throw the greens away and I don't necessarily do this right away sometimes I throw this thing outside just stick it outside on a porch or something and not, don't take it apart until the spring because I'm not using the porch anyway it's not something you have to do right away um, there's a few pins left in here because some of them are just hard to get out um, a screwdriver or something will help you pull them out but if I don't feel like doing that I take the ones I out that I can get with my fingers I put the pins in the baggie. I take one of the pins. I pin the baggie to the wreath and I stick it in the garage until next year when I take it to church. So that to or this year to use it at home. So that I don't need the only thing I need from a kit this year would be candles and ribbons. Um, and Jim left me extra ribbons from what I just demoed. So I have my ribbons but I don't have to, to get a new wreath and I can use this year after year.